Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to produce a fixture that allows us to cut edge joints that are good enough to glue solid panels together. This should really be exciting. If your project requires some wider solid wood panels, the customary procedure is to glue those up out of narrower parts. In order to do that, the edges have to be perfectly flat so they mate together and make good glue contact. All right, if on a normal shop, you might have a joiner or a table saw with a good blade to do that. But what if you don't have those? How can you do it with a CNC router? So what I wanted to do in this video was to create a fixture that I could actually do that with. And it has a couple requirements. One, it has to be based on positioning with the T-slots, and it has to be repeatable, which means I can take it on and off. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start with this graphic, and this represents the machine table, and this is a four by eight table. Uh, this would represent a sheet of material, um, and then there's the part locator pins, and then these are the T-slots. And our setup here relies on the T-slots, so we want to do two things. We want to locate the fixture board so it fits only one way on there, and then we want to use the T-slots to clamp everything together for the machining. So that's really critical. Okay, let's take a closer look at how we're going to use the T-slot for alignment. To give you perspective, that's a part locator pin that's on the machine table. That's the extrusion for the T-slot, and there's, there's a gap at wide, and it's a little bit wider than a quarter inch. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this first pin, and it, it goes into this corner. It's a quarter inch steel pin. It's an inch long, and it actually sticks through the bottom of the fixture board about a quarter inch, so that lets it index. Okay, as we move down here, then you see a, a, a hole that's centered, and that's actually for the clamping bolt that clamps everything together. As we go down through here, we encounter another hole, but this time, this is located against the right-hand edge, so what that becomes is as a method to take the slack out. Then we come up to the slots, and you'll see three slots, and the slots are for adjustment so that we can use different length boards. So the threaded rods come out of the T-slot grooves, and then that helps clamp that down. Then here's another pin locator to the left-hand side, then another slot, and then we pick up the next uh, T-slot and so forth. So that's how that's all used. Now, keep in mind, you could actually make one of these eight feet long if you wanted to. In our case, we had a fairly small part, but, but you're not limited to the length of the T-slot in most cases. You're actually limited to the travel on the machine and the Y-axis. Now, after we figured out all the geometry uh, as a 3D model, then we just created a simple DXF drawing, and we brought that into VCAR Pro, and that's what this is. This is our fixture board. There's the outside. Okay, these are holes and those are the slots. So what we need to do now is actually apply the tool pass to those, and let's look at that. The first thing that happens is we bring the drill out, so we drill the holes, and it's a quarter inch drill. There's the holes. Then we cut the slots with a quarter inch bit. And finally we cut the outside. Once that's done, we've produced our fixture board. Now, we pretty much have everything figured out on how our fixture board's gonna work and everything gets clamped together with the T-slot, so that's perfect. We're missing one thing, and that's tool paths. So what I need to be able to do is to jog the machine over, line it up with the edge, and then run a tool path that moves only in Y. All right, so when I draw the tool path, I start with a piece of geometry. If I look at the size of it, it's, it's 34, and the reason it's 34 is the stock is 31, so I want it centered on there so the cutter comes down in space, makes a cut, comes back out. And I really need two versions of this, one to run on the left side of the blank and one to run on the right side, so that's what these are. And you can tell the difference here. Let's do simulation. Okay, if I run the right side one, so it would technically run on this side, look where it starts. It starts on this end. Okay, if I run the left side, it starts on the other end, and we do that so that we can always cut an edge with a climb cut setup, whether it's on the left or right. Now that we have all our information put together, let's go out to the machine.
next step is to use the pins to locate the fixture board. The clamps are used to both secure the fixture board and the stock to the machine table. Once the stock is secured, set the origin to the lower corner of the stock. The Z0 should be set to the top of the fixture board. Position the first cut, make sure the machine is at Y0. Then move the cutter in X so that it lines up with the right edge, just taking off a small amount for the first cut. Press XY0 and that will move the origin over. Execute the program to machine the right edge. Inspect the newly machined edge for defects. To make an additional cut, move the machine to X0Y0 and use the incremental keys to shift the origin to reflect the depth of cut for the next pass. Verify the move on the machine controller, then press XY0 to set the new origin position. Once the edge is done, return to the X0, Y0 position, then jog the machine to the left edge and repeat the process. If you machine both right and left edges for the board without moving in the fixture board, the board will have uniform width. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sometimes a project requires some real creative thinking. You know, the Shop Saber CNC is a great tool for that creativity. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.